and get started this morning. I'd like to ask if we've got visitors or guests with us here today. Your first time ever, you're back here with us visiting today. I know we've got one that's been a part of us for many years. It's good to see Carolyn back here. Uh, again, Carolyn, uh, the last name. Greg? Oh, okay, it's good to have you. Are you from... Uh, Greenville. Greenville. Okay, it's good to have you here. Both of you, good to see you. <laughs> good to have you here. Anybody else? First time ever you're back here visiting with us. So, again, we just welcome each and every one of you. Tom and Rosie, it's good to see you all back here again today. We're glad to have you all. Uh, thank you, everybody else. Anyway, this morning, a few announcements. I think most of you all know by now that uh, Kathy Cash's mother, Suzanne Murphy, passed away Friday. Uh, uh, arrangements are going to be made tomorrow. They was waiting on her brother to get from Alaska, so as soon as we find out about that, I'll try to pass it on to everybody, and uh, we'll just wait to see how that goes. So please keep that family in our prayers. And then uh, also, Monday, tomorrow, will be our men's meeting at 7 p.m. Tuesday night will be our women's meeting, or the women's meeting at 6 p.m. Also tonight, we'll have Pam Curtis. Her maiden name was Evanoff. That's uh, Charlotte Abram, Abram Evanoff's daughter. She'll be doing a special singing for us tonight, so look forward to that. Want to have her. Also, Danielle Clements had her baby, uh, was it yesterday? Yesterday morning. Uh, had a little baby boy, five pounds and one ounce. So, again, let's praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand for that. Keep all these in prayer and different thoughts. Also, uh, Avram Evanoff was in the hospital this week. He was having trouble with his vitals and stuff. I think they got that straightened out medication and stuff. Uh, Ralph Cook, it's good to see him back here today. I think he was having some things with the medicine. So, uh, prayers. And then uh, we've actually got a Jake Cole that was dealing with cancer. Also, Abby Kindred, and that's some of the Ross's family. Nine years old, dealing with leukemia. We want to keep her in our prayers from here on out. And then there's a Scott Curley that had a, a heart attack. We want to remember them. So, Ron and Loretta, it's good to see you all back here this morning. We just keep having some thanks with her eyes. We want to keep her in prayer with that. And Laverne Botkin, she's back here with us today. Uh, again, you was having some tests on your eyes also. So, everything, anything plain on that yet? Okay, I thought you was getting your eyes checked. Other than... Okay, on your knees. So, good thing you ain't depending on me to do the surgery. <laughs> but keep her in prayer, praise God. And then again, we've got Bonnie to her and Steve. It's good to see them here today. We want to keep her in prayer as well. Give her a hand. We're glad to see her. She's going to be good. Bob and Patty go for it. We're glad to see them back here today. God bless them. I think Bob's been doing a little bit better, so we want to keep him in prayer for that. And uh, again, just some of the things. Right now, I'd like to uh, again ask if we had any birthdays in the church this past week? Any birthdays? Billy had a birthday. Eric had a birthday. Huh? Next week. Oh, next week. Okay, well, we'll save you for next week. <laughs> so, anybody else? Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday in the church this week. I know one lady was telling me, Donna, how many years? 57. Give them a hand. Rest in the spirit. Her husband, she says, still doing well from procedure. It was his a hip or a hip surgery, so keep him in our prayers also. So, uh, and that's our 
Anybody been in and out of the hospital from the church that you know of this week we haven't mentioned? Don't mean to miss anybody? Well, at this time, I'm going to ask us to stand. And Kevin Davis, he, if you don't mind, he's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And when he's finished, Steve Nash will lead us in music. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. standing. We're going to learn a song I heard this week. We're not going to do it today, but we're going to learn songs called I Feel Like Singing Today. So I hope you feel like singing because we're going to sing some up tempo stuff here.
hands, somebody. Shake some hands and make some smiles. You can be seated after you like, welcome yeah, everybody to you. Turn the page. What? 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 What?
We're going to get ready for our prayer at this time. If you want to do the anointing, I'm going to ask you to come on up here. <coughs> Again, remember tomorrow night, men's meeting, Tuesday, the women's. And then uh, also remember the Murphy family. And as soon as we find out arrangements, we'll certainly let you know that. I'm sure we'll be doing a dinner and we'll want some help with that. I appreciate everybody that does that when you can. So we're going to have to come up surely, hopefully, sometime this week. So either way. And then remember Danielle Clements and her new little baby boy. Keep them in prayer. Abram, Abram Evanoff, still praying for him. Uh, Jake Cole, gentleman dealing with cancer. Actually, he works with my son over to where he's at. And then Abby Kindred, I am pronouncing that right, Jim. Abby. Abby. Oh, Abby. Abby. Okay. Abby Kindred, nine years old with leukemia. We certainly want to keep that young one in prayer. And then Scott Perley that had a heart attack. We'll remember him. Still praying for Jim Abbott as well as Scott Wampler. Bonita, we want to keep her in prayer. Still praying for your brother Wendell, I'm assuming, too. Keep him in prayer the rest of them. Our back is with her knees, not her eyes. So. But either way, I want to keep her in prayer with that. Uh, Stella and Boyd Henry, her and her daughter Pam Owens. Still praying for David. Uh, I guess he's still knees or something. We want to keep him in prayer for him and his wife, both her with the headaches and heart problems. Uh, still violent Hattie Bodkin. June and Charles, I'd like to say it's good to see them here this morning. Keep them in our prayers. Uh, praying for Karen and Chris Grayson, keeping them in our prayers too. My wife Sandra, also uh, Wayne's wife Janet, we keep her in prayer. Uh, those dealing with cancer, Doug Field's got a sister dealing with that. We also want to pray for uh, Sarah Leffler, keep her in prayer. And I think she's went home, you said. Okay. Still praying for Greg Hester. He's got to start some things here before long. Still praying for Brenda Dean. Also, those dealing with heart problems. We still talking about Melody Wire. Also, Lloyd Bamford Jr., keeping him in our prayers. Travis Barrett, Larry Bauer, and uh, also we want to remember Donald Davis. And for Kevin, for his, was it your eyes also? Okay, keeping him in our prayers. Loretta and Ron Stapleton with their eyes. Uh, for the families, the Bodkins, Whitlocks, Days, Jeffries, for all of our families. How about a revival in the land today? Amen. How about a revival in our church? How about a revival in our heart? I think we can all use that. I know it starts with the believers, and again, that's contagious, hopefully, and uh, hopefully it'll rub off. Uh, invite people to come to revival. Tell them you are the revival. We'll bring it that way. So we don't have a suitcase coming yet, but at the same time, we do want to see us. The revival spirit in all of us, praise God. Prayer request from you all starting up here. Answer. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for a very present share today. It's so good to share it. And I'd like to thank you for watching over all of us to take care of us. And I can say this to you for this beautiful day. It was a Give her a hand for testimony. Other prayer request up here? Yes, Dallas? Thank you, Lord. 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 Joanne Bays. Joanne Bays. Okay. Remember that. Okay. Others up here, Steve? Uh, Two unspoken from Bonita. Thank you for your prayers. That's why we're here. Amen. Others up here, yeah, Leon? My mother, Sister Sam, has <coughs> been having migraines, headaches. I talked to her this morning. She had a real bad headache. So, y'all remember her and my children. My grandchildren. Amen. Other Quake? Myself, friends and family, two unspoken, and uh, for lost souls, the families with lost souls. Amen. Family. Absolutely. And for our service. Absolutely. Others? Prayer request on this side, Ronnie? Myself, friends and family, and two unspoken. Okay. 
Okay. Others? Prayer request? Eric? Yeah, the guy I know he was diagnosed with cancer. He had his uh, surgery the other day. I think it better if I don't have to have chemo. Mm -hmm. He's still got a ways out of it, so I pray for him to get better. Okay. Okay. Other prayer requests on this side? Brenda? I like prayers for mom. She's still out there. Uh, Grant, it was good to see her here with you last week to help to see her feeling better. Other prayer requests? Oh, okay. Jim? Uh, we've got a good high school uh, friend that's found out she's got the pancreatic cancer, and she's going to need a lot of prayer. Okay, absolutely. Anybody else on this side? Prayer request? Rita? Pray for all my brothers and sisters. Uh, they're all in 4th L in need prayer. Absolutely. Anybody else on this side? Prayer request? Over here, prayer request? Yes, sir. One, yeah. uns one unspoken. Okay. Sharon? Yeah. <laughs> How'd I do that, right? <laughs> Forever? Yes. Um, I want to pray for all lost loved ones and family and uh, and I want to thank God for all of the um, thank you. Thank you. answers prayers that we've had and all the prayers Other prayer requests, Rena? A couple unspoken, and then specific prayer for my sister. She's still stuck in, in Campbellsville. Other prayer requests, Kathy? I forgot to mention in Sunday school this morning, uh, <coughs> my son Bruce has a good friend at Ford's that was in a, a very serious car accident just at that time. Okay. Michelle? Family and friends. Okay. Yes, young lady? <laughs>
come to you. Tell me this morning, Lord. We thank you, God, that we can come to you in faith, believing, Lord. And God, all things are possible to them to believe. Lord, as we come to you this morning, Lord, with some things that seem almost impossible, Lord, we know that you're still on the throne, and you can do above, exceedingly above all that we can even ask or thank for. God, we are praying today, Lord, for our land to change, Lord, from darkness to light. Donna down here asking for, especially the city of Louisville, all the things that's going on over there. Lord, we know that it seeps into our side of the river too, Lord. God, all over this country, Lord, even this world. God, we're praying for a great move of your spirit, Lord. That God, people's hearts can be changed, Lord. Not just their minds, but their hearts, Lord. People change their minds every day, Lord. But we're praying that their hearts will be changed for good. That they'll see Christ, the hope of glory in their hearts, and they'll want to live for the kingdom of God, not this world. God, we pray today, Lord, for all the needs that have been mentioned, Lord, by the people gathered here today. Uh, ones that we have on our prayer list here today, Lord, God, for... Lord, these ones that just need your touch, Lord. God, the ones dealing with cancer, Lord, the little nine-year-old, heavy that needs a, a touch. God, we've seen leukemia healed in, in children before. Pray that it will be again. Pray for life in here today for a mother. Call her up in prayer. God, we pray for Brother Bill Riley, oh Lord, we're glad to see him back here today. Forget about that, but I want to pray for him, Lord, that you'll bring forth healing to his body. God, for Auburn Ambanoff, who was in the hospital earlier this week, I, I pray for him and a man that's had a heart attack, Scott Curley, and some of the family know him. And God, we just lift him up in prayer, Lord. Pray for the burn boxes here with her knee procedure coming up. Uh, for Lorena back here with her eyes, Lord. God, we pray for her. Again, you're touching upon her for caring grace, and we lift her up in prayer. For my wife, Sandra, for uh, Wayne's wife, Dan, and we pray for David, Melody, Wire, God, all the things that you're going through. Pray for all the ones dealing with cancer. Doug Field's sister also for Sarah Leffler and Greg Hester. And, a host of others, the heart conditions, we pray for them, Travis Barrett, Judy Hall, Frank Owens, uh, Donald Davis, we pray for him as well, Kevin with his eyes. We pray for Tracy Higdon, her and Gary today, Tracy's back with mother, and we pray that you'll touch the ministry to her. Gary wasn't feeling well, I ask God to touch him, Father God. For the Murphy family, Lord, we pray for Suzanne Murphy's loved ones, Lord, that you'll be with them even through this week. And Lord, for the days, weeks, and months, and years to follow, Lord. God, for all those that have come forth here today to be anointed for themselves or someone else, and some of them come up that have been anointed, we lift them up in prayer as well, Father God. We pray for Danielle and her new little baby, Lord, that everything's going well for them, and we'll get to see them back here in the church building soon also. God, for Kathy Graham, we lift her up in prayer. Pray, God, you're healing upon her body. Lord, for others, Lord, that uh, need a touch from the Master's hands, Lord. For all of our families, Lord. Pray for those in nursing homes and rehab. We pray for shut-ins in every sense of the word. Lord, we pray for our country today, for America, Lord, for this nation to turn back to you, Lord, to truly be a nation under God with the liberty of Jesus Christ. Pray for our elections, the right people to be in and for all of us to be out, Lord. We uh, pray, God, for those that are, again, in authority, that their authority will be led by you, Lord. Pray for our military, police departments, fire departments, battle departments, EMS, and farmers. For all those that protect and serve, you'll protect them, Lord. Glad to see Brother Bob and Patty back here today. I pray that you'll continue to give him some good days and lift him up, Lord, and pray, God, that he'll be able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can even think, as well as all the others, Lord. 
Thank you for Bonnie to being back here with us today. And pray for her, Steve. And God touch them, Father God, for Stella over here for her husband and daughter. Pray for the young lady that's going to be singing for us tonight, Lord, and you'll be with her. again, Pam, Pam Curtis. God bless her with the songs tonight. Pray for our services here today, Lord. Pray that God, you'll probably show up in a special way, even in our prayer time right now. Touch our hearts and lives. God, for those that are discouraged today, I pray for encouragement. For those that are down in the dumps, I just pray, God, you'd help them feel some peace and comfort in their hearts today, Lord. For those that are dealing with other, whatever issue, we bring it before you. And we ask all things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's children said, give as well. We pray, God, that, Lord, their needs be as met as well. And again, Lord, whatever we do in word or deed, may we all do it to your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.
somewhere along the line they had to come alive to me and they had to do the same thing to you when it says in the beginning was the word that means the word was always with God all the way there's no beginning or ending of God himself but for us to understand it was already he was already there God was already a part of his own existence how many of you know that we have to come to the realization that God give us a new beginning? Yeah. To give us a new start. If we were, to, and I don't want to turn over to it, but over in 1 John chapter 5, it says there's three that bear record in heaven. Does anybody recall what those three are? Most of you would say the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. But you know what it actually says over there? The Father, the Word, which is the Son, by the way, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The reason being the Word was put there is because it's the living Word. I said the same thing many times too. I would have said it today if I hadn't looked at it before. But at the same time, it means that that Word become life. The Bible tells us the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, even in the same chapter that we're reading here this morning. 
But it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with, the, with God. All things, not some things, but all things were made by Him. Remember when God said, let there be light? When God said, let there be a firmament? When God said, there, let there be everything that we see in existence today? God spoke it into existence. We're not deity, but our words have still got power in them, don't they? Doesn't the Bible say life and death is in the power of the tongue? We need to be speaking things that have life fulfillment in them, don't we? Because that's what God's speaking to us, because He is the Word made flesh. But getting back here, it says, All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, zo-life, eternal life. And the light was the light of man. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. We realize that we're talking about John the Baptist here. The same came for a what? Witness. What was that word? Witness. A witness. You reckon maybe God may want us to be a witness too? But at the same time, not only did He come to be a witness of that light that all men through Him might be saved, might be believed, I should say. I want you to look at verse 8. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. How many of you know we're not gods ourselves? We're not deities ourselves. We're not the Alpha and the Omega. God is. I know we can say greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but i got to realize I'm not numero uno, am I? Like to think that sometimes, wouldn't we? But He's number one, isn't He? What's that song? Without Him I can do nothing. Oh, wow. We've got to realize that, again, we're not the light, but we're to bear witness of that light. How many of us spend more time talking about ourselves than we do about God sometimes? We talk about our problems more than we do about our Savior and our Healer, our Deliverer. We talk about our problems and all our things, and there's nothing wrong prayerfully doing that, but at the same time, we spend more time discussing our own things than we do about what God's wanting to do through us, don't we? We're all guilty, aren't we? But John realized right off the bat, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, talking about Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. And the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. The world still has a problem with that today, don't they? Most people are caught up with religiosity. They think, well, Jesus is just a religion. He's just, you know, some kind of formality of some kind of rituals that people go through. I'm going to tell you, He's more than just a ritual, folks. He's the Alpha. He's the Maker. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our Savior. He's our all in all, glory to God. What I can't do, He can do. What I think I can do, He can do. Any of us, we can think we can do all things on our own, but it takes Christ to hope and glory, doesn't it? How many of you know, I, you, we all, we're a mess without Christ, aren't we? And God can take us through our trials and tribulations and we'll just realize who He is. It says, He came into His own, verse 11, He came on His own, and His own received Him not. He came to the Jewish people, letting them know that He was the Messiah, the Savior. And they wouldn't receive Him. I'm not saying none, but the biggest part. Verse 12 says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Wow. 
Uh, Gary Hagen, he's not here with us today, but he made us some plaques in a Bible study we had years ago. It says, the Son of God became the Son of Man, that the sons of man might become the sons of God. We have no relationship with God without Jesus Christ. It took Him to give us that relationship. It says, but as many as received Him. Let me ask you a question today. Have you received Him in your heart? I'm not asking, did you go to church this week? I'm not asking you how many times you got checked off. I'm asking you, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you know that you know that you know that you know that your name's written down in the Lamb's book of life? Not of you shuck a preacher's hand. Not of you got dunked underwater 25 times. Not of you did some kind of religious attribute. I'm talking about have you received Him as your Lord and Savior? Amen. It says, but as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Sons and daughters, we could say. Children of God. Mm -hmm. He gave them power. What's that song? We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Wow. Has the power got a hold of you? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in those times where you could just feel God's presence? Maybe in the songs this morning. Maybe in the worship. Maybe in the... Prayer, maybe whatever. Have you just sensed the presence of God, the power of God upon your life? Yes, maybe it's home all alone. Maybe it's in a, a place that you get all by yourself. It doesn't have to necessarily be in a church building. That's a good place to be with other people that believe the same way. But just a time and a place where God just showed up in a special way to you. And you feel it. You felt His presence, His power. But it says... To them gave me power to become the sons of God. I can't become a child of God through my own efforts, through my own strength. It's got to be through God. It's got to be through His power. Even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Man couldn't make it happen. Man couldn't even orchestrate it. We've got ways of, I mean, even having surrogate mothers and all the different things that people do today. It, it covers everything, doesn't it? Not of blood, nor the, the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. John chapter 3 says, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. There's a new birth. Mm -hmm. Do you know that birth today? That birth that changed your life? Yes. That birth that Tuck something out of you and put something new into you. Mm -hmm. And verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of Him and cried, saying, This was He of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me before for He was before me. Amen. And of His fullness have all we received in grace for grace. God's unmerited favor. Didn't earn it. Didn't deserve it. God made it available. All I had to do was receive it. I had to accept it. Amen. For the law was given by Moses. He was the lawgiver. The lawgiver means that he laid the law on. Mm -hmm. You can't do this, and you can't do that. Amen. You better do this, and you better do that. You better not do this, and you better not do that. Amen. And you're a mess if you do anything I say not to. Yep. How many of you know we've all been a mess? Yep. How many of you all know that we've all had struggles with authority? We talked about our Bible study this morning. Again, that Bible, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. You know what makes the Bible a whole lot easier to understand? When you know the author. When you know the one that really wrote it. I'm not talking about man. People argue with that all the time. The, the Bible was written 
by inspiration of God as He spoke right. to man. It wasn't written by man regardless of what anybody thinks. If you believe that, then you don't believe the Bible at all. You've got to believe that God is the one that gives the revelation yes. of His Word. Yes. It was spoken by God and man penned it down as they were given that. Yes. But the law, again, that was just simply showing me that I'm a flat mess without God. Amen. <laughs> I can't quit drinking, I can't quit smoking, I can't quit cussing, I can't quit running around, I can't straighten up at all. <laughs> you all might have a few other problems in your days, I don't know. <laughs> maybe it was smoking dope, maybe it was doing drugs, maybe it's for whatever. I don't know what your deals was. I know what mine was. You try to turn over New Year's resolutions, and all you do is take one hand and pick up another one. Yep. And New Year's resolutions don't last, what, five to ten days at the most. It's just not a, unless it's from the heart. Amen. Unless God changes, you don't change. I know some people have been saved at New Year's, but I'm just saying, New Year's resolutions themselves. God's the one that does the work in us. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me, right? I can't get there without Him, can I? Mm -hmm. no, I can't get to the place I need to be. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask Him, Who art thou? Have you ever took the time to ask Him who you are, Lord? <coughs> I want to know Jesus. How about you today? No. I want other people to know the Lord. How about you today? Amen. I want them to realize that He's not a figment of my imagination. He's not some religious <coughs> attribute I've tucked up. He's not some kind of denominational doctrine. He's real. Amen. Ain't that right, Bobby? He's real in my soul. <laughs> my God is real. Where I know that He's real in my soul, praise God. It, it says... And truth came by Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, who art thou is where I need to go back to. Verse 20, And he confessed and died, denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. John the Baptist speaking. And they asked him, What then art thou, Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are thou the pro that prophet? He answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou thyself? He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. How about you? How about me? How about all of us? Are we a voice crying in the wilderness? I know we're crying in the church building this morning, but are we the voice of one crying in a messed up world? Donna used to talking about how messed up our world is right now. We need the voice of God, don't we? Yes. We need God's voice speaking through all of us, not just through preachers, not just through uh, whatever calling, but all of us. You say, how can I, how can I talk to somebody and, and share with them? How can I make a difference? How about just taking time to love somebody once in a while? Amen. How about just taking time to tell somebody... I care. Yes. But I know somebody that cares even greater. Yes, we do. I can't carry all your burdens. I can't carry all your hurts and pains. But I know somebody together we can carry them too, don't you? Yeah. I can't be everywhere at one time, neither can you. But I know somebody that's all places presence, don't you? I know that, uh, again, I'll mess up and I'll not do you right sometimes and I won't do it on purpose, but I, whatever, but I know that He'll never do you wrong. What's that old song? There ain't nobody like my Jesus. <laughs> Bad grammar, so who cares? <laughs> I just know there's nobody like Jesus. Mm -hmm. He'll take care of us, praise God. He'll make us what we need to be share with us how we can share with others. Yeah. Let's be that voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight 
Verse 24, and, and they which were sent were the Pharisees, and they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then if thou be not the Christ, or Elijah, or that prophet? John answered, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latches I am not worthy to unloose. Me neither. These things were done in Bethphoria beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. And the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Why don't it say sins? Because all sin is death, right? It don't matter what sin you've committed. Some people think, well, I've not committed that sin, and I've not committed that sin. There's only one sin that's not forgivable. And that's the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. I believe that's just the point where you just don't care no more, but at the same time, all sin, anything that separates you from God is wrong. Is it simply yeah. missing the mark is the word originally used there. This is he of whom I said after me cometh the man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not. But that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove that abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said to me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Last verse in this scripture. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Amen. Who do men say that he is? He's not just a prophet or a religious figure. He is the Son of God. Amen. Yes. Who am I? <laughs> a song, he'll song worship, put out. Who you say I am? Who am I that the high? And again, this is a reading. This is in Scripture. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? I was lost, but He brought me in. <clears throat> who is this, who the sun sets free? Oh, is free indeed. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Who the sun sets free? Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am in my Father's house. I, yes, I am in my Father's house. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. I'm chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me and not against me. I am who you say I am. God's for us, not against us. People say you're a mistake. People say you're a failure. People say that you're no good. You're this, that, and the other. Maybe not necessarily all at the same time, but... People say all kinds of things about others, don't they? Yep. Jesus simply said one thing. Thou art forgiven. Remember on the cross? When He was dying on there? He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And God made a way of escape for every one of us. I want you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <coughs> finish up there. Verse 16, we're not going to go into the, the body of the tabernacle, but verse 16 it says, 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we Him no more. We don't know Him in the flesh no more. He's gone. Where did it go? Well, we must go back to John 14. We know that in our Father's house are many mansions, right? We're going to do that. But verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man, anthropos, male or female, humankind, 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. become new. I've been changed. How about you? Amen. I'm not what I'm going to be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be, right? <laughs> I may not yet be perfect, but glory to God, I'm striving to do my best. And I still fall down, but I still get up. How about you? Yes. I may say things that I don't think. You know, you ever shoot your tongue out for you think? Yes. A couple of us. The rest of you. <laughs> okay. But we've all messed up, haven't we? Yep. But thank God that we are a new creature in Christ Jesus. And old things are passed away and all things are become new. One of the newest things I know is I don't have to be condemned no more. Amen. I don't have to wonder if I'm in a car wreck tomorrow, where am I going to wind up? I don't have to wonder about if somebody pulls a gun and does something wrong and blows us away. I don't have to wonder, God forbid, any of those things happen to any of us. But we already know that they're happening to people every day, don't we? We already know that things are happening unexpectedly. And we need to be ready at all times, don't we? I don't want to wait till the last minute to get my house in order. How about you? If I did, my house would probably never get in order. How about yours? It says... All things, verse 18, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to Himself. He's brought us back to the right relationship. By Jesus Christ, He hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. God's wanting us to help bring other people Amen. back to the right relationship with God too. You know what? And I can't do it with a mean, foul, honorary spirit. I've got to do it even when it hurts. You ever have people that's hard to be kind to sometimes? Have you met any of them like that this week? This day, this morning? <laughs> Things happen, don't they? It says for us to help reconcile. It says to say that God, verse 19, to say that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing or counting their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors, we're spokesmen, for Christ, as though God did beseech or beg you by us, we pray you in Christ he be ye reconciled to God, for He hath made Him to be sin for us. Yes. Christ became sin for us. Christ did not sin here on this world. But when He was on the cross, He took upon Himself mm -hmm. your sins, my sins, mm -hmm. our sins. For He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. A few more verses in chapter 16. We then as workers together with Him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For He saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold now is the accepted time. Behold now is the day of salvation. I want to know that I'm right with God. How about you today? I know I'm preaching to the choir, but at the same time, we as a choir need to know what to say to the world, don't we? I'm not talking about in a mean, foul spirit, but I'm talking about being a light, being a beacon of hope. Our family members that keep wanting to put it off. Our loved ones and our friends. There's only one problem about putting things off till tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> you don't know when your tomorrow is going to end, do you? <laughs> and actually tomorrow never does come anyway, does it, when we think about it. The ABCs of salvation. Admit you're lost. Believe that Christ is a Savior. And confess Him as your Lord and Savior today. If we haven't done that before, we know that all have sinned. All we like sheep have gone astray. We know that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And we know that if we'll confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, we shall be saved. 
Let's stand this morning in this noon or whatever it is. Who is he and who am I? He's God and I'm not. <laughs> He's a Savior and I'm saved. He's a healer and I want to be healed. He's a deliverer and I want to stay delivered. How about you today? He's our all in all, isn't he? He's our everything. I want to ask you today, if you're here in this building, you're watching or listening at another time, do you know that you know that you know that He's your Savior? And do you know that you know that you know that I can say I'm saved? I know my name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, not because of something I did, but because of something I received, and that was Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Do you know that today? If you're here today and not for sure about that, I, I want to pray a prayer with you. As a matter of fact, the altars are open if you need to come to the altar. Yes. And if you're watching or listening another time, we make it open for everybody. But just a simple prayer. Just simply say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm lost. I know that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And I ask you to forgive me and to come into my heart. I confess with my mouth Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart, I believe in my heart even now that He's been raised from the dead. And right now, I accept you as my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. If you could pray something simple like that or just simply, Lord Jesus, save me. <laughs> Again, you may not have time to write a a big prayer or anything else. But you need to know that everything's well between you and God. If you need to come and have prayer with us or yourself or whatever, I'll be glad to pray with you if you just need. But they've got a song for our closing right now. And if you need prayer in any way, shape, or form, or you need to make a public confession, you can do that here today. You've never made that before other people. You went to church all your life, but you've never went and let people know that I'm ready to get saved or I am saved. This is the place. This is the time. Don't just assume because mom and daddy was saved or grandma and grandma was saved that you're saved. I'm holding on to their coattail. No, you have to be saved. You have to be. Again, the altars are open for that. Could be anybody
Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day in the Lord. Come back to us tonight again.